At 18, I travelled to Australia for football trials. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out. Probably should have seen that one coming. But I decided to stay in Australia and spend a year living, working and travelling. God was very much an afterthought for me in those days. I might pray if I was in trouble or if I needed something, but other than that, not so much. The time I spent in Australia granted me access to a lot of things I thought would fulfil me. For so long, going to Australia and living this life of sunshine, travel, surfing, drinking, girls and partying, that was my main ambition. Party and alcohol and girls were very much the holy trinity for me back then. I've literally lost count of the amount of times I must have stumbled out of some horrible dive bar during the course of that year and then spent the next day on a beach hungover. But that was my big dream the ideal scenario and the perfect life. My mind was just a mixture of Hollywood and MTV and I always just thought if I could have that lifestyle, then I'd be living my best life and my heart would be content, that I would feel fulfilled. And it was confusing for me because it wasn't the something more that I'd been longing for. It didn't leave me fulfilled. And it was kind of scary too because the next question quickly follows, what's wrong with me? Why am I still not content despite all this? Coming home from Australia and being back around family and friends and loved ones that I'd missed during my time away in Australia kept some of those questions off my mind for a while. But one of the things that did happen during my time home was that I was able to reconnect with an old friend of mine called Phil, one of the most decent guys you could ever wish to meet. We'd just meet up and go for drinks and make up stupid songs, just have a laugh, have a good time. Just one of those people, it's pretty rare in life that you just connect with, you just feel at home with. One of the most decent people you could wish to meet. But one thing I didn't love about him was that he always wanted to share his faith with me. And I remember one day just snapping back at him a little bit. I'd had enough by that point. And I just said, why can't you let me believe what I believe? And I'll let you believe what you believe. I'll never forget his response. He said, Pete, if what I believe is true, then I care about you too much to not share it with you. You know, we all need friends in our lives that care enough to tell us the hard truths from time to time, and Phil was that friend for me. After our conversation, he said, I'm gonna give you a plain English copy of Mark's Gospel. It's short, written in plain English, it won't take you long to read. But what I want you to do is go through it and underline and circle anything you think is rubbish or doesn't make sense. And then we'll get together and we'll chat. If you're still not interested after that, I'll respect your decision. And so at 20 years old, I started reading about Jesus for the first time. And what I saw was a challenge because I knew what I was expecting to see. I was expecting to see some religious figure who had a few good sound bites, surrounded by self-righteous do-gooders and suck-ups. Someone who spoke a good game, but in reality just enjoyed a position of power to lord over others. But the gospel proclaims the real Jesus. And instead of this religious bigwig I was expecting to see, I saw compassion with skin on, mercy on legs, justice personified. Jesus taking the hand of those who had been treated unjustly. In Jesus, I saw true love in human form. He was walking around the place, forgiving people of their sins, healing the sick, confronting religious hypocrisy, bringing hope to the poor, the destitute and the broken, and saying the kinds of things that if a God of love truly existed, you might expect him to say. And I realized as I read the Gospel of Mark that Jesus and religion didn't have a lot in common. In fact, they are very, very different. And I remember thinking to myself, if God is like this guy, if God is like Jesus, well, that changes everything. 